Yeah, it's not raining this morning. How are you? Good. I'm doing all the church today. You what? I'm doing all the church today. Oh, I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm just out here to spread the word about abortion and oh, yeah. uh, that it's murder. And uh, so I want to I want to bring the gospel and God's word into conflict with our with basically the evil that we're doing in this age. And if I have these, you want to take one of those and, and read it. Tell us uh, basically what we're doing. I mean, if you really love people, if you really love the church, see, that's the response that, that we get from time to time is people get aggravated. And I'm out here showing pictures of what we're doing in society, and they're mad about that. And uh, we should be mad about what we're doing, not about somebody bringing the, the issue to light. Yeah, but there's a lot of people that they want to have kids, and it's like, Right. Well, there's a lot of people out there waiting to adopt kids as well. And so using the murder as an excuse because I wasn't ready to have kids is, is a poor excuse. Yeah, and, right. uh, and so we, we need to understand that, that as soon as an egg is fertilized, you have a living human being that's being formed, that's being developed in the womb. Yeah, and, and I think all those people that have kids, they want to get abortions like murdering somebody so they should put them in prison. Right. Because you're killing a, and that's, a human. And when you're out here... They say, I kill you, right? Yeah. I go to prison. Yeah. You know, Amen. What's the difference? That, there is no difference. And that's, that's, that's what I mean. The cops, they, you know, what's the yeah. difference? Yeah, well, we, we implore cops to, to go and rescue women from the abortion facilities as well because that, that's their job. And, and uh, we as a society said, well, the Supreme Court said that this is okay. Well, God said it's not. Yeah, you're right. And, and so when God says it's not, we go by God's standard, not by man's. Are you a Christian? Do you go to church? Uh, I haven't gone to church. Yeah, why not? I don't have that much faith. You don't have that much faith? You were you ever born again? No. Uh, you know there's a God, right? Yeah, I, no, I don't because right now I'm going to a lot right now. Yeah? I lost my girl. Yeah. My stupidity. Excuse my language. No, that's... Being drunk, I almost took her out. I went to jail, I came out, took up the charges. Yeah. I started working things out, but yesterday she just took me that. So what do you have? I told her. I have nothing. You have a house? Right yeah. now because I'm working. But right. You have a job? You got breath, brother. You got breath. Yeah, See, these things aren't accidents. Sometimes I I can think, I really try to send it myself. Yeah. Well, you know what? You cannot fix yourself. You, you talk about the stupid things that you did, but that only comes from one place. The, the healing only comes from one place. So, so you can try, and you've tried this. I know you have. You've tried to fix yourself. you tried to make everything right. You've tried to love your girl the way you think she deserves to be loved. But there's no other standard except from God. If you use your standard, it's just like these people that are murdering. They're using their standard to say that that's okay. You're using your standard to say, the way I treat you is fine. You're using your standard to say, because I want to get drunk, that's fine. But God says, no, man, you were created in my image. I love you, and but, but, but I have an expectation of you. So if you turn from your sins, if you repent, have you ever heard that before? So this, is, this is what Christ requires, okay? So if you were to die today, and you were to die in your sins, do you know where you would go? You would go to hell. That's God's prison for people that don't repent and turn from their sins. So what he asks of us, he goes, look, this is my standard. And he uses the Ten Commandments as a standard. Have you ever heard about the Ten Commandments? Okay, so the Ten Commandments is a list of his laws that gives us a, a standard to follow so that we know what his expectation is. We, we get all kinds of expectation from the Bible, but we can use his law as a, as a, as a means so that we can see what we're doing wrong. So, what you say, have you ever lied? Yeah. Have you ever told a lie? Yeah, what does that make you? Makes you a liar, right? Yeah, yeah. I've told lies, it makes me a liar. Have you ever stolen anything? Yeah. Yeah, what does that make you? A burglar. A thief. Yeah. yeah, it makes you a thief. Have you ever looked upon a woman with lust? Have you ever lusted after a woman? Yeah. Well, Jesus says, and this is how, this is how high his standard is. He says, if you've ever looked upon a woman in lust, you've committed adultery in your heart. So, so by your own admission, and I'm in that same boat, you're a liar and a thief and an adulterer at heart. Have you ever been mad at anybody, like actually wanted to kill them, just been angry for no reason? Right. And God says that if you've ever been that angry at a person, then you've committed murder in your heart. So you have committed murder. Okay. By his standard, you have committed murder. 
So you're a liar, a thief, an adulterer, and a murderer. And you probably didn't even think that any of that applied to you. But God says, because of those things, no liar, no fornicator, no adulterer, no thief will inherit the kingdom of God. So if you were to die and go stand before the Father at this time, and we're all going to die, and we're all going to stand before the Father, what would He be required to do to you? Send me down. Send you down. But you know what He did for you? Have you ever heard what He did for you? What He did for me? He sent His Son in the form of Jesus Christ, in the form of a man, fully God, fully man, to become born of a virgin, live a perfect life, a perfect sinless life. Neither you or I could do that. Only God could do that. Live a perfect sinless life among us. Teach us everything that he had to teach us. Right? And then he went to the cross. He was beaten and bruised for our sins and hung on a cross for our sins. He took the penalty for your sins. So now, instead of going to hell, he can send you to heaven. If you are born again, He can send you to heaven, right? So what does it take for that? It takes repentance. You must repent. You must turn away from the things of this life. You must turn away from the lying. You must turn away from the stealing. You must turn away from the drunkenness. You must turn away from the adultery and turn towards Christ and Christ alone for your salvation. Because he died for your sins and was raised again three days later to prove he was God. To prove his that he had power over sin. To prove that he had power over death. To prove that he was a holy and righteous God. So all you have to do is turn from your sin, repent from that sin, and trust in him alone for your salvation. So you don't trust in what... what you're doing. You don't go, okay, well, I don't lie anymore, so God's got to like me. Uh, I don't steal anymore, so God's got to like me. No, you go, I don't steal because of what God has done for me. And when I do sin, when I do bad things, man, it pains me because I hate that. I hate that I've offended God. Not that it's wrong in this society, but I hate that I've offended God. I've sinned against you, God, and you alone. And so that is the place to be. So when you go and you repent from your sins and you trust in Him alone for your salvation, you are born again. The Holy Spirit will come and live with you. He will convict you of your sins. He will point you in the right direction. He will take you into a building, into a church that will raise you up and mature you. Going to church doesn't save you. Only faith in God saves you. But you go to church so you are matured. So you're around other Christians. So you can see right from wrong. Because everybody in church is not saved. Everybody in church is not a born-again Christian. They sin too. So they sin too. But a, a, a born-again Christian is now considered a saint. Okay? You're not considered a sinner anymore. You're considered a saint. When God looks upon you in judgment, when you go stand before the Father, He no longer sees a sinner. He sees you clothed, clothed in righteousness, which only comes from Jesus. So you are wearing Jesus at that moment. So when you go to church and you see people sinning, you should be concerned and you should implore them to repent from their sin and turn towards Christ. When you go to church and you see people come out, Brother, what I saw you doing last night wasn't good. You need to humble yourself and go, Man, you're right. I need to do things different. And so you have people in church that are going to build you up and you have people inside that church that are going to go on, man, I, I can continue to do what I'm doing. And you need to base your behavior on what God has said because He's got an absolute standard. Absolutely sin is wrong. Absolutely lying is wrong. Absolutely killing children is wrong. And so you need to base you on that standard and understand that if you are born again, then, uh, then there's repentance and there's, and there's salvation. You can go to heaven now. So is there any reason, I mean, is there any reason today that you wouldn't ask God for forgiveness? That you wouldn't repent from the sin in your life and turn towards Him? Is there, is there any reason? Because remember, you're not guaranteed tomorrow. You, you could die today. You could cross this street and die today. I could die today. 150,000 people die every day. So is there any reason today? And you need to get alone in this. No prayer. Don't let anybody tell you, hey, say this prayer and you're saved. No prayer will save you. It's only repentance and trust in the Father that will save you. So, get alone. I'll pray for you, man, if you want me to pray for you before you leave. But you need to do this. 
you need to go, God, I know you're there. I can look around and I can see the trees. I can see the sky. I can see this planet. It didn't happen by accident. I wasn't born by accident. I have beauty. I have purpose. I was born in your image. So God, direct my path. Teach me what I need to know. I want to turn away from my sin. Lord, I want to repent. I need your Holy Spirit to guide and direct me. I want to get my woman. I want to I want to treat her like, the, like you want me to be treated like you want me to treat her not the way society tells me to treat her I want to raise her up in your image I want to teach her everything that you have so that she herself is saved so that she doesn't have to go to hell so that she is safe from your wrath so that we can live a beautiful life together okay so that's what it that's what it's about it doesn't mean you're gonna get her back does it mean everything is going to be perfect in your life? Absolutely not. Because he's got a lot of things to teach you, brother. He's got a lot of things to teach you. And it's not about the things of this world. It's not about that new house and the new car and everything going right. It's about how am I preparing to spend eternity with the holy and righteous God. Yeah. All right? Well, let me get going, sir. I need to pay my phone bill. All right. That. Well, I will pray with you if you want. If you don't, that's fine. But get alone with God at some point today and understand He is holy and righteous and perfect and you're not. Okay? And so you must implore with Him. I'm Sean. David. David? All right. Well, hopefully I see you around. God bless you, sir.